caution is advised. Forty-five seconds. A series of shots. History turned inside out. The Kennedy assassination was the first time where Americans suddenly felt, I'm not as safe as I thought I was. The assassination of President Kennedy is a significant part of American history because it was a dramatic change in the future of the country. It's a human event. It's a human tragedy. The death of John Fitzgerald Kennedy in Dallas's Dealey Plaza is one of the most controversial events in American history. People began to fall around me. I, well, something's happening. But what many don't know is that dozens of cameras were rolling that day. Cameras that captured images that define a tragedy. You could hear intake of breath and sobs, particularly the frame where Kennedy's head literally exploded. But if there were dozens of cameras that day, how come none of them captured conclusive evidence of who fired the fatal shot? If we take a look, that is definitely a human. Now, Unsolved History turns Dealey Plaza into a high-tech laboratory and searches for new clues hidden in these frames of shocking evidence. We will photographically reconstruct this 45 seconds that changed the world. On Unsolved History. The freeway was jam-packed with spectators waiting their chance to see the president. President's car is now turning on to Elm Street. It appears as though something has happened. Well, I was in the car and I heard, bang, bang. Bang! Just about like that. November 22, 1963, Love Field in Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy and his wife Jackie arrive. White House press corps photographer David Wigman was there. This is his story, told through the pictures he shot that day. about seven cars back and we actually waited until uh, we saw crowds to start shooting and it seemed to me I remember shooting along here because the driver was helpful he'd say you're in you're in the main part of town or here's where, where our good crowds are be aware of anything that might happen somebody running out giving them roses or somebody throwing an egg or that sort of an incident and be ready with a full crank each scene you'd take you'd wind up tight for that sort of thing Heading into Dealey Plaza, Wigman in the motorcade turned off Main onto Houston, then took a hard left on Elm. It was down this street under the Texas School Book Depository and in front of the infamous Grassy Knoll, where the bullets would meet a president and history would turn inside out. I felt the third shot, actually felt compression on my face, knew then it was not any cherry bomb. I decided I've got to run forward, this car's not going fast enough. So I swung the other leg out and I ran very quickly, fast, and turned on the camera, figuring the camera could see at least what I'm seeing because I had nothing to shoot. At this point, I saw people laying on the ground, uh, two, gr two groups. I shot one, planted my feet, because then I had something to shoot, took it off my chest and shot a steady shot through the finder of people there and through the finder over there of some a man and a boy. And uh, at that point, there was nothing else I could see that I had There's shot. Something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was rushed to Parkland Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 1 p.m. from a devastating shot to his head. Within an hour after an intensive manhunt, 24-year-old Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested. Oswald worked in the Texas School Book Depository, where many claim the shots came from. But Oswald never got the chance to be tried for the crime, as he himself was murdered by Jack Ruby two days after the president was killed. It's almost become a cliche to say it, but you know, everybody remembers where they were when the assassination took place. The country changed, their lives changed, and nothing would ever be the same. Pearl Harbor. 
Kennedy assassination, Challenger disaster, 9-11, the Columbia disaster. These things are crucial periods in time. And what they tell us is we can be vulnerable in this country. We were in the midst of the Cold War, the civil rights movement, and the outer fringes of a place called Vietnam. And the leadership of our country was cut away by an assassin's bullet. The debate has never ended. Who killed John Kennedy? Was Lee Harvey Oswald the sole assassin as the official investigation claimed? Or were there more shooters in Dealey Plaza that day? The physical and photographic evidence has been disputed for decades. Some say that the shots were fired by a lone gunman in the book depository, shooting from behind the president. The fatal shot striking from a distance of 265 feet. Others claim that the physical evidence suggests another assassin firing from the front. This hypothetical gunman waited behind a fence on the infamous grassy knoll. Were any of those gunmen captured on film? What we're going to do is try to replicate what happened on November 22, 1963. And you each know your parts. You're going to play one of the We do know one thing for certain. David Wigman wasn't the only photographer in Dealey Plaza. There were an estimated 500 or more people that November day. Approximately 30 had cameras. 10 were rolling on those last 45 seconds. But what did their cameras really capture? And perhaps, as importantly, what didn't they capture? And why? What information lies within their frames? What really happened in Dealey Plaza? In order to investigate the photography of the Kennedy assassination, Unsolved History assembled a crack investigative team. Gary Mack, assassination historian. Mark Waggy, a Dallas photographer. Steve McWilliams, a cinematographer experienced in motion picture cameras. And graphic designer Douglas Martin, who will digitally recreate Dealey Plaza. By combining their respective disciplines and bringing the science of the 21st century back to 1963 and to the scene of the crime, we will analyze the last moments and the assassination of President Kennedy. Our investigation begins in Dealey Plaza. The presidential motorcade had to detour through this small city park, which soon would be turned into a killing zone. One of the questions we hear most often from people who've never been to Dallas before is, my goodness, it's so small. Dealey Plaza is tiny. The geography of Dealey Plaza is important because it's key to so many aspects. Where the shooters could have been, where the shots could have come from, photographic evidence, eyewitness evidence. Although the geography of the plaza is the same as it was in 1963, some of the tenants are different. What was once the Texas School Book Depository now houses much more than books. Lee Harvey Oswald's suspected perch is now a museum dedicated to those last 45 seconds. Here, many of the actual cameras used that afternoon can be found. The Sixth Floor Museum has provided us with original images from many of the key photographers. Their footage documents in color the final 45 seconds of the life of President Kennedy. By stringing these films and photographs together, we've got a clock now of about 45 seconds from when the president's car turned into Dealey Plaza until the moment that he was killed. In order to interpret this footage, location is everything. For where people stood and the exact vantage point they had as they filmed is crucial to our reconstruction. 
recreate those positions, our graphic artist, Douglas Martin, used a special digital camera to build a seamless 360-degree panorama of Dealey Plaza. From this information, Martin then created a virtual model of the location, accurate to one foot. We can now pinpoint each photographer and their angle of view. To make this more clear, I've color-coded the field of views from the different cameras. The yellow indicates still pictures, while the red indicates moving footage. This looks real good, but we need to move Bronson a little bit. He was in the center, an unknown woman is standing to his left, and his wife is to the right. Great, perfect. I didn't film any more. But digital imaging can only go so far. We needed to bring back some of the people who were there that Friday afternoon in 1963 and ask them to reconstruct a day they will never forget. I thought they were firecrackers. Somebody grabbed me and pulled me down to the ground. This program is sponsored by Wachovia Securities. Wisdom is everywhere. Uncommon wisdom is knowing how to apply it. Securities, we learn from the world around us. Because regardless of conditions, investment opportunities can be found. Together, we can achieve uncommon results. Wachovia Securities. What's brown to me? One word. Mahoney. Mahoney does the work of three. So instead of three different guys for ground deliveries, overnight, and international, Hey, how you doing? At three different pickup times, all I need is one Mahoney and one pickup. You wore the shorts for TV, didn't you? Put, put, put man. One driver, one pickup, one reliable network. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Lesson one. Did you know typical hairball formulas contain more than twice the fiber of ordinary adult cat diets? That much fiber helps remove hairballs, but it can also carry away valuable nutrients. That's why Purina One Advanced Nutrition Hairball Formula has new technology that helps control hairballs with a third less fiber, so more nutrients can stay in your cat. Purina One brand. One can make a difference. Animal Planet invites you to experience the animals of today as the monsters they once were. March 9th, Animal Planet's own Jeff Corwin takes you on a journey through time as he tracks modern-day descendants of the biggest creatures to ever walk the Earth. Giant Monsters, starring Jeff Corwin. March 9th, only on Animal Planet. Message from the law offices of James Sokoloff on mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is a rare, malignant type of cancer in the lungs, usually associated with exposure to asbestos. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with mesothelioma, call the law offices of James Sokoloff now. Call 800-981-5896. That's 800-981-5896. is going midi. Pembroke Castle in England really takes you back to the Middle Ages. We're taking four regular guys. A cowboy, a policeman, a equestrian, and an army major who plays polo. We're training them in chivalry, including the art of war. You're like a human tank. It wasn't purely about jousting. And the art of love. It's like a game. Knights from the past certainly have my respect. Discover the Days of Knights. Tournament is coming to the Discovery Channel. Brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. We should change before we pick up the girls. Okay. 
Chevy Avalanche. It changes from a pickup to an SUV. What are you doing? Avalanche. define innocence Sunday dresses a toddling grandchild a daughter going off to school but these images mark the end of innocence for the photographers for the next thing they would capture on their cameras was the death of a president but what did they really capture on their film is it possible that this footage can throw new light on the mystery of who shot John Fitzgerald Kennedy? Well, the images keep the story going, in a sense. Uh, but the images also answer some questions. They help people try to make sense of this. And there's a lot of controversy about what did or did not happen. To answer these questions, unsolved history needed to recreate, as closely as possible, the exact positions of the photographers in order to determine what they did and did not capture on film. Gary Mack helped us to reconstruct the scene. Well, I think many people don't realize how many films and photographs were taken in Dealey Plaza that day. There were so many different angles and so many different viewpoints and so many questions that can be asked and hopefully answered by the photographs. That making people aware of this imagery and this information is important. Photographer Robert Hughes worked on the south side of Dealey Plaza. During lunch, he selected a spot near the corner of Houston and Maine to film the parade. He was filming with an 8mm Bell & Howell camera loaded with Kodachrome color film. His footage first shows a bit of the gathering spectators. When the president's car turns off Maine, Hughes films for 18 seconds. The middle portion of his film also reveals the Texas School Book Depository, including the sixth floor sniper's nest. Several witnesses saw a gun sticking out the window and, and saw the shots fired. Hughes could have caught that, but by then the limousine was out of, out of his sight. It had turned the corner and, and was out of his view, so he stopped filming. Within five seconds, the shooting started, just like that. Orville Nix also filmed on Houston, near Robert Hughes. He then moved around the corner onto Maine, and though distant, filmed the motorcade traveling along Elm. Orville was using a Keystone AutoZoom 8mm camera. His son, Orville Nix Jr., remembers that day. Out here, and what do you do next? Well, the parade turned right here on Houston Street, so he started taking pictures. Got about two or three seconds worth of pictures taken there. Maybe he could get a better shot from right over here. I'll show you. Like several others, Orville Nix repositioned himself to film the motorcade on Elm. He didn't think much about it until he heard a shot or a noise. When he did, he was up here and he turned and started taking pictures. Orville Nix's film offers us a view of the fatal shot, this time looking at the grassy knoll. The location where some believe a second gunman stood. Well, the next film is probably the second clearest film of the fatal shot to President Kennedy's head. But his film shows the grassy knoll during the shooting. If his film had been lighter, if, 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 there might have been a clear image of the grassy knoll to know for sure whether there was another gunman there or not. Some of the photographers had unique vantage points, including one taken from inside the book depository, only a few windows from the reported sniper's lair. Elsie Dorman worked on the fourth floor, two double windows away from the sixth floor window. Although not experienced with the 8mm family camera, Elsie agreed to film the event. 
Her son Jim recalls his mother's experience on that day. She had the camera along the side of her face okay. looking through the viewfinder. And she was filming the motorcade as it turned and then came down the street and then turned down uh, Elm Street to the triple underpass. These shaky images are the result of Elsie being unwilling to look through the eyepiece of the camera. The viewfinder in the camera was one that you had to look through, which of course obstructed her view and bothered her quite a bit because she really couldn't see what she wanted to see because the camera basically was in her face. It's such a wasted opportunity. She had the ideal location to record the limousine going down Elm. And this is the most frustrating film of all. Elsie Dorman was just flopping her camera around and uh, she just, she was an amateur. This angle might have revealed details that could have proven or disproven some of the conspiracy theories. The trees blocking the view today were much smaller in 1963. In the now infamous grassy knoll, far more visible. But Elsie did manage to capture a view of our next photographers. The Towner family, standing by the Elm Street curb. Jim Towner holding the still camera, and his daughter Tina with a movie camera. Tina Towner was only 13 years old at the time of the assassination. She was asked by her father to film with a Sears Tower Verizoom 8mm home movie camera. Jim Towner was taking slides with the Ashika 44 twin lens reflex camera. Their filming location was right on the corner of Elm and Houston. And he told me what to do. He told me to follow the motorcade around the corner instead of holding the camera still. Jim Towner's picture was snapped just as the president turned off Houston Street. Little could Jackie Kennedy imagine the horror that was just 10 seconds away. There were people in the way here, but as soon as I could see the motorcade through my lens, then I, f I followed him around the corner like this. Okay. And when we could see the, only their backs, then I quit taking pictures. The Towner film ends moments before the shooting. Kennedy had gone from her view, and she couldn't see him anymore, so she stopped filming. Within a second or two at the most, bang, first shot. Tracking the presidential motorcade as it moved along Houston Street was 45-year-old Phil Willis. He took several pictures on Houston, and then two more as the motorcade moved down Elm. His final perspective gave him a view of the grassy knoll. He was using an Argus Atronic 35mm still camera. His daughter Linda was shadowing his every move. We were across from the courthouse and my dad began snapping pictures with an Argus 35mm camera. As the motorcade turned right onto Houston Street, my dad was still snapping pictures. The limousine turned, position right about here, and he had stepped off of the curb and captured one of the last shots of Kennedy alive from this vantage point. As a view of the president, this slide is not impressive. He is barely visible. But other details are very significant. For beyond the presidential limousine, we can clearly see the grassy knoll. What's so tantalizing about the Willis picture mm -hmm. is that if there was a grassy knoll gunman, he's got to be in the background there somewhere. And you can look at this picture for every day for the rest of your life, and you may or may not see anything. He was so close. No question that the view captured by Phil Willis adds another piece to the assassination mystery. Marie Muchmore began filming on Houston and then hurried across the sidewalk to point her camera to the motorcade traveling on Elm. She was also using a Keystone 8mm camera. Again, we see the presidential limo proceeding along Houston. At that point, Marie moved across the sidewalk to find a view of Elm Street. Filming for just three seconds, the much more footage gives us another view of the fatal shot.
It also captures one other photographer whose identity has tantalized investigators for decades. This figure, known to researchers as the Babushka Lady, also clearly has a camera raised to her eyes, filming the fatal shots. But incredibly, she and her footage vanished after that day, adding fuel to the conspiracy fire and tantalizing what-if questions to our investigation. A woman has come forward claiming that she is that person. A Kodak lab technician remembers a photograph from a very different woman. That picture was out of focus, uh, so the woman went home, walked out of history. But there was another camera, just a few feet away from Kennedy's car. 31-year-old Marianne Mormon was standing on the side of Elm Street, waiting for her chance to take a picture. She was holding a Polaroid land camera, similar to this one. Her angle of view was right next to the spot where the motorcade would pass, between her camera and the grassy knoll. As the car was coming down and it's moving, you don't have much time because it is a Polaroid. I just stepped to the, uh, to the edge here and Gene is hollering, look, Mr. President, look our way. And then I snapped the picture, which was at the same instant, evidently, as the bullet hit him, not realizing that's what had happened, but I did hear a noise. Taken just 15 feet from the president, this picture documents the exact moment of his death. I could see people around me um, falling to the ground or running and doing, and that, you know, let me to know something is happening. This Polaroid gives us the clearest view of the grassy knoll at the time of the fatal shot. Marianne's vantage point gave her not only a clear view of the grassy knoll, but also the Texas School Book Depository. Had she taken a picture earlier, rather than waiting for Kennedy to get closer, she might have given us a view of the infamous six-floor sniper's perch and the image of a rifle being fired. But does this extraordinary image have any other stories to tell? Unsolved history needs to recreate that picture and recreate history. How do terrorists get their hands on deadly germs? Where do they come from? How easy are they to spread? The science, the history, the facts. Bioterror, the invisible enemy with Tom Brokaw. A spotlight special premiere coming up next, only on the Discovery Channel. Which leap pad book do you want me to get? Yeah, there's quite a few. Arthur. With the leap pad learning system, Phonics, science, there are over 50 math, titles, music, all organized in three easy-to-use learning levels. Oh, Scooby Doo, dinosaur. So you'll know exactly Superman. which book to get. So which one should I get? Can we go through them again? Pick up Disney's The Lion King and learn pre-reading skills, B baboon, vocabulary, cubs, and more. Word for baby lion. Only from Leapfrog. <laughs> This guy tells his buddy there's nothing he'd like more than a new riding lawnmower. Nothing too expensive, he says, but nothing's going to give me any trouble. Nothing too complicated. Nothing better than making it look good and getting on with it. His buddy looks at him and says, nothing runs like a deer. Introducing the John Deere 100 series. Durability, precision, and exclusive support. For anyone who wants a tractor that's easy to run, easy to maintain, and easy to afford. It's so incredible. This, the system must think I'm him. Who? Him. Holy, that's all his stuff. I can't that's... believe we're in here. Talk about your insider information. Be cool. He can see us. So, cover me. I'm going in. Browser, someone you never worry about when your systems are secure. Novell. See the television event that critics call sumptuous and epic. Building the Great Pyramid, rising from the sand in four days on the Discovery Channel. Do more in the Subaru Baja. With higher ground clearance than Ford Explorer Sport Track. With a smooth car-like ride. With better gas mileage than any other sport utility truck. 
and the only compact sport utility truck with full-time all-wheel drive standard. The all-wheel drive Subaru Baja. Do more for less with 0% financing now on the all-wheel drive Baja. We go through this every time. Red. Blue. Leather. Cloth. Whoa. Now that's a car. No, that's my car. I built it on the web, and they sent me that the next day. Printed and personalized. My color, my interior, where to go. They even gave me a free CD player. It can be here in a week. Well, at least we talked about it. Come on, come on. Relive the construction of one of the world's last true mysteries through the eyes of Nacht, an Egyptian builder who dedicated his life to building the Great Pyramid. Sunday at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. As the presidential motorcade turned into Dealey Plaza on November 22, 1963, a number of amateur photographers took cameras in hand to film the historic event. When the gunshots echoed in the plaza and the presidential limousine sped to Parkland Hospital, cameras still rolled on the stunned aftermath of the shooting. Here, Orville Nix captures the crowd, stampeding towards the grassy knoll. Robert Hughes films the same panicked flight. The crux of the controversy is simple. Did Lee Harvey Oswald actually fire the deadly shot just 90 yards from a sixth floor window in the Texas School Book Depository? This is what the first official investigation claimed. Or was there a second assassin hidden behind this now infamous grassy knoll? As some other investigations allege. Only one photographer, Marion Mormon, captured the fatal shot in a still. Her angle of view takes in the stockade fence in the grassy knoll. Because of its clear view of this area, her Polaroid has been controversial since day one. You know, this is the cleanest copy of this I've ever seen. This is a copy of the version kept by the Dallas FBI office. The FBI copied her photograph shortly after the assassination, maybe a week or so later. And under the Freedom of Information, uh, back in the 1980s, I obtained this print. This two and a half inch print must be blown up considerably to look at the detail in the background. For conspiracists, proof that someone was hiding on the knoll would be the key to the mystery. Evidence that Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone. But what would a second gunman actually look like through this camera? Are we looking in the right place for the right thing? So Marianne Mormon was right here, and what we're going to do is replicate her shot. Basically. Very Unsolved famous. history brought expert photographer Mark Waggy and an assortment of cameras to Dealey Plaza. Today we have approximately the same light that they had in 1963. Right, which is a very good this is be great for this, thing for our test. For this test. We then positioned our three extras on the stairs and a mock gunman behind the stockade fence simulating where the hypothetical gunman could have hidden in 1963. We then took pictures with an exact duplicate of Mormon's camera. And to see what a more sophisticated device would have captured, we also took pictures with a 35 millimeter camera and film stock, comparable to what would have been available at the time. After processing the negatives, Unsolved History checked out the results in Mark's studio. First, we looked at our new Polaroid image. Polaroid negative, here's the Polaroid print, two size. That could be enlarged, of course, but that's the original off the camera. Unlike the original, there is no debate. We planted a gunman in the shadows. His silhouette is clear, but we can see no details. In the original Mormon Polaroid, 
No definitive silhouette can be spotted. Clearly, the scene around the grassy knoll has changed somewhat with the times, but not that much. Why wouldn't Mormon's picture have captured the gunman? Unfortunately for history, that camera and film could not take a razor-sharp photo. It's a print, it had no negative, and yet it's a 3000 ASA film, so it had clumps of silver in it the size of New Hampshire, probably. Right. Uh, and she had stopped down her lens all the way, so she had focus front to rear, probably, right. with depth of field. But when you stop down a lens, it's, it's notorious for uh, destroying the resolving power of the lens, so it's not that sharp. Yeah. I don't think we can dismiss any theory just based on that print because it's just simply not clear enough to, to know what's going on along the stockade fence. There's just not enough information and never will be. But what if Marianne had used a 35 millimeter camera? Would she have captured a mysterious gunman and rewritten history? If we take a look at, at the 35 millimeter, right film. I don't think we would identify ever the person that we have sitting back there, but you take a look. Mm -hmm. There would be no question that that is definitely a human, and, and you'd get some idea of a stocking cap on. So yeah, you can certainly it would be see obvious. It. She'd had a 35 millimeter camera with a good film of the day, then we'd probably have some of these questions answered, or they just never would have come up. One has to ask, would a sophisticated hit team have risked being caught on film by all of these photographers? Well, if it was a professional hit team, then they knew what they were doing. They knew where to hide. They took a risk, of course, but they were professionals. They, they were doing their job and they succeeded. Our investigation did not end here. Unsolved History decided to analyze the film of Orville Nix. Three-dimensional imaging shows us his exact camera angle, which gave him a clear view of the grassy knoll. Orville Nix was about 20 We asked Dallas cinematographer Steve McWilliams to reshoot the Nix film in order to see what Nix could and should have captured. Replicate with the film stocks that we have today and uh, see if we can expose and, and get an image similar to what he had that day. Orville Nix made a key mistake on that November afternoon. He used an indoor film stock outdoors, then forgot to use a correcting filter. The result was a film with dark shadows, obscuring any details of the grassy knoll. This is Pretty an 8 millimeter. This is called double 8. Or reg what regular. would history look like if he had used the right film stock and the right camera settings? First, we put our mock gunman back on the grassy knoll, and then, Using a vintage 8mm camera, we reshot the Nix film the correct way. Next, we took it to a transfer facility to enhance and enlarge it. Today, we have sophisticated enhancement techniques that were unavailable in 1963. But, could more have been seen had the Nix film been shot correctly? Would we now be able to see the detail in the shadows of the grassy knoll that the original lacked? By overexposing the film and being able to look into the shadow area. Look at that. Yeah, there's a, you there's can start a person to see, standing there. You can, you can see it. There's still areas, though, that I look at and I go, is that a person or a shadow? And I was there shooting it. and. Uh, it's, it's hard to know, but I think when you do run the, the film in motion, right. um, you do see uh, more information. You can get some uh, additional information. Again, the more you examine the circumstances of the Kennedy assassination, the more one realizes why it continues to be such a mystery. Had Orville Nix just operated his camera properly, he may have captured what was going on in the shadows of the grassy knoll. Unfortunately for history, 
And perhaps, fortunately for a hidden gunman, Nix used the wrong film without a correcting filter. But Nix did capture something. Can you stop it right there? What's interesting is, uh, even in these dark shadows, you can see Abraham Sapruder and his receptionist standing as he's filming, uh, obviously, his very famous footage. But even with them in dark clothes, the flesh tones come out. Fortunately for history, one man was in the right place, with the right equipment, and filmed for the right amount of time. His name was Abraham Sapruder. This program is brought to you in part by Fidelity Investments, because you're not just invested, you're personally invested. While you are out, life called. Life called. And guess what? You're late. Because you're trying to be everywhere, do everything. What you need is some serious money management. Experts who can create a model portfolio. Then manage it based on your investment objectives. The money management pros doing, doing what, what they, they do. do. You. You. You doing what you do. Fidelity's Funds Manager Program, a portfolio of mutual funds designed to manage for people like you. Call Fidelity, because you're not just invested, you're personally invested. Meanwhile, in Albuquerque, the CFO of a burgeoning olive import company has an epiphany. By eliminating one olive from every jar of olives they sell, he could save the company $200,000. An idea so well received that he's asked to save 500000 more. There you go, Mr. Carter. Hard to believe a phone can save us a million bucks, huh? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm still in the car. Ten minutes, an hour, I've got no idea. This is ridiculous. Can't wait to get your new Jetta? With offers like this, why would you? Contacts feeling dry. Try changing your no rub solution. OptiFree Express is the advanced no rub with a special hydrating ingredient that attracts moisture to the surface of your lens then holds it there so your contacts feel fresh and comfortable even at the end of the day. OptiFree Express No Rub, a real advance in No Rub Solutions. 100 years ago, fearless innovators launched us into the world of aviation. Now, Junkyard Mega Wars is about to do it again. Hello! It's a competition so big, we're giving three international teams two days to build vintage flying machines. But here's the catch. They can only use turn-of-the-century materials and tools. This competition's taking off. Junkyard Mega Wars Flight of the Century, March 9th at 8 on TLC. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights at 11 on Cartoon Network. Yeah! Boom! The action cartoon sci-fi comedy drama that redefines action cartoon sci-fi comedy dramas. What the hell was that? Futurama! This is fantastic. Futurama. It's gonna be fun on the bun. Futurama, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights at 11 on Cartoon Network. Build and promote your business by advertising on cable TV. Call Cox Media today to get your commercial on air. 679-5200. The 2003 Lincoln LS V8 and BMW 540i recently went head-to-head -head in a series of handling tests. The result? The LS V8 out slaloms, out corners, and has better handling performance than the BMW 540i. Lincoln LS V8 as shown 41,700 LS V6 starting at 32,495. How do terrorists get their hands on deadly germs? Where do they come from? How easy are they to spread? The science, the history, the facts. Bioterror, the invisible enemy with Tom Brokaw. A Spotlight special premiere coming up next, only on the Discovery Channel. The sequence of deadly events that took place in Dallas's Dealey Plaza on November 22nd, 1963, began with a right turn and ended with a tragedy. Was John Kennedy murdered by one sniper 
aiming out of a six-floor window? Or was Kennedy the victim of a sophisticated hit team operating elsewhere in Dealey Plaza? No matter what you believe, there is one home movie that documents the assassination in horrifying detail. But as with so much surrounding this story, those details have been debated. This much is certain. Abraham Sabruder worked in the Daltex building across the street from the book depository. Anxious to take pictures of his favorite president, he wandered onto the plaza and selected this elevated vantage point for his filming location. You can walk around Dealey Plaza today looking for a better spot and you probably won't find one. That one was perfect. He was above the crowd. He had a sweeping view. He planned it all. He carried an 8mm Bell & Howell zoom camera, loaded with Kodachrome 2 film. Zabruder can be seen in this Phil Willis photograph, his receptionist, Marilyn Sitzman, steadying him on the cement pedestal. Filming for just over 26 seconds, Zabruder was the only photographer to capture the entire assassination sequence. I had a shot. And he uh, slumped to the side, like this. Then I had another shot or two, I couldn't say what it was, one or two. And I saw his head practically open up, all blood and everything. And I kept on shooting. Sapruder took his film to this Dallas Kodak lab near Love Field. Phil Chamberlain still remembers the first screening. The reaction of the people in the room was generally that of being stunned. You could hear intakes of breath and look at that and sobs and particularly the frame where Kennedy's head literally exploded. Uh, you could hear a sudden intake of breath of people as they watched it. We can now tie the Sap Bruder film into our timeline of Dealey Plaza photography and see the small details that transport us back in time. And the president is just now reaching the Dealey Plaza. As you go down Elm Street, the crowds get thinner and thinner and thinner. Up in the back, you can see uh, wearing the blue skirt is uh, Tina Towner and her mother and father, so they're waiting. And Zapruder is filming because he doesn't know what to expect. And the first car he sees that looks like it might have the president, he starts filming. You can see Willis there, he's actually in the street. He's taking a picture right there. And of course the motorcycles are real close, so he's gonna step back. And Willis is winding his camera right now and is about to take his next picture, which he always said was as a result of hearing the first shot. It startled him. And he's gonna take his picture uh, right about here. As the car continues down the street, we'll see the woman called the babushka lady. But as you can see, there's a man standing in front of her. So it's hard to say what her film might or might not show because there's a head blocking her view. Now coming into the frame is Jean Hill. And there's Mary Mormon with her Polaroid camera. She can't quite see Kennedy because his head is blocked from her view by Jackie. But now she gets a view of Kennedy's head and she's about to take her picture and click. That's the moment of the fatal shot. Gary, this is just moments after the assassination. And look at these two individuals. I'd never noticed that before. Yeah, they're running east. They're running away. Seconds earlier when the shooting was going on, they were directly in the line of fire, at least from the building. So they're now running to get out of the line of fire. And here's the limousine that's going into the triple underpass. Zapruder is about ready to stop filming. But... Had he kept turning just slightly, this is the view he would have had of the grassy knoll and the fence where some believe a second shooter was crouching. You know, Gary, if he had just panned one more inch, he could have captured that stockade fence and that inch could have changed history. He might have answered all the questions, but he could have raised a lot more. The Sapruder film in place. Unsolved history can now return to November 22nd, 1963 at 12.30 p.m. 
the moment when the presidential motorcade turned into Dealey Plaza. You're watching the Discovery Channel. Don't miss the premiere of the groundbreaking new Discovery series, Spotlight, next. And later, from the war room to the bridge, get an inside look at the Cuban Missile Crisis. Critics around the world are digging building the Great Pyramid. A visually stunning journey. Ravishing. Sumptuous and epic. The stairway to heaven itself. This Sunday, be there for a groundbreaking television event. The construction of one of the world's last true mysteries. Building the Great Pyramid. Sunday at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. This is to confirm an Etruscan chamber mud treatment. Three o'clock is fine for her portrait sitting. She will take her breakfast on the veranda. Cadota figs. Rios. Scottish kippers and a steamed potato. Do not remove Master Davy's comic books from nightstand. Confirming one poolside massage for Miss Beckett. Please reserve an in-cabin babysitter for the Patterson suite. For one week, for two weeks, for three if you choose, you can be treated famously aboard one of our cruises. For more information, call your travel agent or log on. If there is anything you need. Anything at all. Is the president there? Kelly Grant from Fort Wayne, Indiana? Sure, I'll hold. Hello? Yes, Mr. President. Say, I know you're busy, but could you take care of this social security solvency thing so no one has to worry about it? Sure, no problem. Great. Anything else you need? Nope, that'll do it. Bye. If one person could do it alone, the world wouldn't need an ARP. Bio Terror, coming up next, only on the Discovery Channel. Martin, please, come in. Everyone know Martin from IT, the guy who linked all our applications together? What, no chair? Okay. Anyone whose department didn't make a 170% return on investment last quarter? Step back from the table. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a seat, Martin. System upgrade. What happens when the technology you invest in actually makes you money? Novell. The new BMW Z4 Roadster. The ultimate driving machine. For a limited time, lease the new BMW Z4 2.5i for $3.99 a month. The Roman Coliseum, home of the Gladiator, right? But get this, legend says it was flooded for full-scale naval battles and aquatic spectacles that put Vegas to shame. Now the Discovery Channel's going to find the proof. We're sending in hydraulic experts and testing to see if this ancient theory, well, um, holds water. See, every week forensic science is putting history to the test on Unsolved History, a series from the Discovery Channel. So set a course for Rome and set sail for the truth. Unsolved History, Wednesday, March 12th at 9 on the Discovery Channel. John Kennedy's deadly ride through Dealey Plaza lasted only 45 seconds. Virtually every second was captured by a camera somewhere. Gary, now that you see the photos in their point of view, what does this tell you? Well, it's impressive to see it graphically like this, to see how much area in Dealey Plaza was actually covered by films and photographs. What a unique opportunity to go back in time through the computer to try and figure out what happened. Our final reconstruction leads us to some interesting conclusions. First, much of Dealey Plaza was photographically covered during the critical 45 seconds. But the two prime locations where the fatal shots could have come from were not properly documented. 
The grassy knoll was either missed because a camera did not pan or because the photography was too indistinct. This sixth floor window was photographed earlier, but not at the time of the shooting. And what about the areas that were not surveyed by our photographic mosaic? These include the Dow Tex building, the west side windows in the Texas School Book Depository, and the top floors of the County Records building. All would have afforded a sniper a clean shot. But, no matter what direction the bullet came from, the fatal shot was captured on film. And we warn you, that scene is horrific. What sometimes is lost in this is this is a murder of a human being, our leader. When people study the film, I mean, you have to filter out what's really going on, because otherwise you have to stop and think about what all this means. Now, as it happened, the tragedy in Dallas. At precisely 12.30 p.m., the presidential limo turns into Dealey Plaza. full of people went to Dealey Plaza on a sunny November day. The images they captured still haunt us. The Kennedy assassination photography is a double-edged sword, so to speak, in that the pictures answer a lot of questions. But sure enough, every time you look at them, you find more questions. I look at it as like a jigsaw puzzle. When it's spread out all over the floor, you can't tell what it is. But when you put enough of the pieces together, you get the picture. And I think that's what will happen with this case. But looking at how well Dealey Plaza was documented that day, there is one inescapable conclusion. If there was a conspiracy and multiple gunmen, then not only was it brilliantly executed, but the members were unbelievably lucky. They and their shots have evaded capture for 40 years. Perhaps somewhere, in some trunk, in some roll of film, an image exists that might provide this last piece of the puzzle. Meanwhile, these photographs stand as a memorial to a time when a president could ride through sunlit streets in an open car. A journey where the final destination was immortality. The images of the assassination are significant because they act as a time traveler. They take us back to November 22nd, 1963, but we can't stop the film. And so we witness the cruelty and the obscene murder of a president. And we're haunted by it even to this day.
can get the Unsolved History program you just saw on home video. From ballistics to bone analysis to geomagnetic imaging, Forensic Science is now putting history to the test. For only $19.95 plus shipping and handling for each video, you can stay on technology's cutting edge. Have this episode of Unsolved History, nearly an hour in length, delivered to your door. To order, go to discovery.com or call 1-800-443-2402 because there's no thrill like discovery.